In this video I want to try how the Intel Arc A770 performs in deep learning. So um, I got this card from Intel for free. I will, I will later explain how I got it. Um, but yeah, um, I tried it now for about one month for gaming and it worked perfectly. And in the beginning, I had the feeling that there is always some latency when I do gaming. And later it disappeared with a newer driver. Um, usually I play Overwatch. I played about one or two hours a day, Overwatch 2. And so I really have a feeling if the GPU is more slow or not. And yeah, when I, when I got this GPU, I had the feeling that um, sometimes when I'm aiming and I, 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 I shoot that there is some like little latency, um, later this problem disappeared and now it works perfectly and smooth for playing games. Um, also, in the beginning, the GPU was very loud and sometimes um, the fan went more fast and more fast. Also, this issue um, disappeared. So, I would say I can recommend this GPU for playing video games. But this video is not about video games. This video is about deep learning. I want to try to train a transformer model with this GPU. This is a 16 gigabytes version um, and memory is very important for, for deep learning. And I will compare this GPU to my NVIDIA RTX 3060, which has 12 gigabytes of memory. Um, I will try to train a transformer in PyTorch. There are some Intel extensions for GPUs for PyTorch. And I will try to get this running and um, in the best case bench how this GPU performs against the Intel GPU. Uh, it's really interesting what happens now in the deep learning but also in the discrete GPU market. A few years ago NVIDIA was on the option. Now AMD is also investing more resources for the deep learning market um, and also Intel now. So I'm really glad that we have three big competitors who are working at hardware and at the software stack uh, because for us developers and programmers uh, we will get the best experience if there are multiple big companies which are in competition to each other. So in this video I will try uh, how this card performs and if Intel is ready for deep learning. So last year, um, Intel was giving away free GPUs for academic work. And my company is working on a build system. The idea is to have an upstream LLVM toolchain. And uh, this toolchain can target different backends, for example, CPUs and GPUs. Right now we have AMD and NVIDIA support. And um, I replied that we would love to have a free GPU to get the Intel support done. And there is a lot of things happening with Intel and with GP GPU. Um, they are working on the One API, they are working on Sickle, they are working on a lot of amazing stuff. So um, yeah, I asked, maybe they can also give us one GPU for free. And then uh, at that time, Raja Koduri uh, worked at this company and he, he liked this post. And also um, Anton DM'd me and uh, I sent them my, my, an email ad with my address and everything. And then I didn't hear it back from Intel. And then six months later, they wrote me, hey, is this address still correct? We want to send you the GPU. And 
yeah, then, then we got this GPU for free. There is a PyTorch extension from Intel, which is built on one API. And in this video, I will try to get this done. So I will try to train a neural net with PyTorch on the Intel GPU. So here is the benchmark for the RTX 360. Um, it's a transformer model. We have six layers. The block size is 512. And I kept care that the whole model will fit in the GPU memory. We run it. Um, we are using Torch 2.x, so we can use model.compile and it will use the Triton compiler in the background, which speeds up the speed and we get 270 milliseconds per iteration. I just installed the Intel GPU and the driver for the GPU. And now we have some fancy arc control display where we can see things about the performance, like um, how much memory we are using, how much um, this is, I think, from my system, like memory from my system, CPU activity, and here is the GPU memory, and um, other things like frequency, GPU clock, GPU voltage, so some interesting things. Also, if we start um, GPU Z, then we see it's in six nanometers. We have 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. We have a bandwidth from about 659 gigabytes per second. And um, yeah, of course, we, we don't have CUDA, we have OpenCL, we have Direct Compute, which is the Direct X API to um, use the GPU for deep learning. So we, we, I think we could install the Direct ML Torch. Ah, here's the Direct ML. Yeah, sorry. We could install the Direct ML Torch, but I want to install the custom torch um, from Intel and we want to use the uh, one API to do that. So let's jump to our nano GPT again. I have some empty environment and now I just want to go to the Intel website um, and try to install it. So the GPU version of the Intel extension for PyTorch. Um, just let's copy that. Um, I think my Python is Python 3 and I use pip3. So maybe I just adjust that. Okay, <laughs> maybe not pip3, maybe just python3 and pip. Yeah, that seems to work. Okay, my internet is not so fast, so maybe it will take a while. Um, while I'm setting up my um, PyTorch, I can already adjust the code so it will work. Because um, in the moment, we have the option for CPU or for CUDA, but um, we have to do some adjustments. So I guess my device will not be CUDA anymore. Of course not. So uh, let's look in... Um, the sky it. Um, here we are 
importing Intel extensions for PyTorch as IPAX. So I guess this will be our device, IPAX. Oh, they call it XPU. Okay. Let's at first import that at the beginning from our code. Let's call our device XPU and instead of model.compile we are calling ipex.optimize model. Um, so let's look where are we using model.compile compile um, here if compile model torch.compile from model um, perfect and now we are calling model ipex dot optimize model so I guess we are not using Triton anymore. We are doing with the, with the one API. Um, actually, I'm super excited about the one API. Um, I hope that in the future um, it will be more easy to to write one code and target different backends like CPU or GPU. And I also hope that the different backends can be from Intel, from AMD, from NVIDIA um, be because I think um, it's important to have a choice of different hardware manufacturers and not to be locked in, in, in one ecosystem. Okay, we, um, yeah, let's, let's, here we are sending it to the device. I think here before we use some kind of context um you mm, also device type CUDA if let's let's delete this and use the XPU um yeah and now let's look where this device type is used. CTX, no context of device type, CPU, else. Okay. I'm I'm not sure sure if this will work with our XPU. Uh, we're doing it here. Like the everything here we want to do with with our device. Maybe it will not work. Maybe um, we have to get rid of that and, um, and, 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 and just copy the model and the input data to the device like we do it manually. We will see. Mm. Okay. What is our environment doing? We are still installing. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited if this will work. Um, I'm also in general excited about deep learning with Intel. Um, I saw they have some crazy stuff in the pipeline. Um, th this is not a, not, a, not a gaming GPU anymore. This is some serious accelerator which competes against um, GPUs like the H100 from NVIDIA. Um, and I think Intel is just getting started. Uh, the AI market, the training and inference market, uh, it's in such a big growth and they have a big GPU shortage. 
So um, I think Intel in, will invest much more resources. And um, yeah, I hope they will invest more in the ecosystem. Of course, the hardware is important, but the software stack is much more important. Okay, uh, a few hours later. So I try to um, set it up with WSL. Um, I didn't only need some packages for Python. I also need the um, um, Intel DPC++ toolkit. And um, I tried a lot of different things. I didn't got it running in WSL. Um, I'm not sure why, maybe because I'm on Ubuntu 23 and uh, the packages are only uh, built for Ubuntu 22. But but I, tr I tried different things. Somehow um, my GPU all the time was not detected. But no problem, there is an official Docker container from Intel. And I installed that Docker container and I just can run this one. So we are running Docker in an interactive terminal. We are um, getting here our Intel device, which is the GPU. Um, I'm mounting my um, desktop folder where the Nano GPT is. And inside the container, it's mounted into data. Uh, that's a port inside and outside, perfect. And this is the container we are um, running. It's called Intel slash Intel minus extension for PyTorch GPU. This runs perfectly. And um, CD data. And it immediately worked and, um, and it's detecting my GPU. So if you want to do something with deep learning or other other stuff with the Intel GPU in WSR, I recommend you to use Docker. It immediately worked. Um, yeah. Um, the code is not working yet. There are a few things I still have to um, change. So it seems like um, one important thing is we need um, here our optimizer as an argument. So we write optimize and then model and optimizer is optimizer, then it will work. Also the contacts don't really work. I just deleted that here, this you can just ignore it. Uh, this one we are not using, we're not profiling. Um, so the CTX is not really working, no problem. Um, I manually set the device to XPU and um, we are sending everything to our device and then it's working fine. Um, here there were some CUDA synchronized things which um, makes it more slow with purpose. This CUDA synchronize um, waits until every CUDA kernel is terminated and then starts the next one. So I removed that because obvious I cannot use CUDA synchronize with my Intel GPU. Um, now it will be an unfair comparison. So I think I have to run the NVIDIA benchmarks again to also give NVIDIA the advantage that we don't have to wait until a kernel is terminated. Um, I still get some errors, but this should be fine. Um, if I run Python bench um, dot pi, and I think, yeah, so flash attention is not working because flash attention in this case is just a CUDA kernel and we don't have this one. So flash attention, um, so of course we could implement flash attention, but we are using the flash attention CUDA kernel. So um, 
if if we are half as slow as Nvidia, we would have the same speed because flash attention gives us about the double speed. Uh, some things are still not working. I'm pinning my memory to the device. And this works for the CUDA backend, but not for every backend. So only variables are X. Hmm? I thought we have an XPU. Yeah, but seems like it's not working. So we have to get rid of um, pin memory. Hmm. I hope this will work. You know, it's not really convenient. Um, we always have to exit our Docker container and start it again and mount the directory again. Ooh, more errors. Ah, we're doing the same with if there's still some pin memory. Here, why pin memory, okay. Sorry, I didn't saw that. Um of course I have to kill it also for why. And now to exit it, mount it again. I mean, yes, there's another way we can mount it that it's synchronized, but but I was too lazy to do that. Okay, seems it was another error, of course. Um, here we are um, use ipex.optimize for our model and our optimizer, and this also returns the model and the optimizer. And yeah, this I just removed it. Okay, now I hope we can run our code. We are compiling. No, I'm really excited. So it's still not 100% working and I have to figure out why. So if I'm executing my program, the forwards path is working. So we are starting our script, our models compile. And if you look here, um, we see um, we are storaging data, so the model and some some training data on the GPU memory, but uh, and, and we also um, we, we get some loss um, here. So the forwards path is working. We can do inference. But when we call the backwards path, um, we get an error and I have to figure out why. So maybe I have to change the optimizer. Sometimes um, the, 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 the backwards path is, is failing because we don't have enough memory. So like we have enough memory for the inference and then we are um, calculating the gradient and then our memory is full, but this is not the case. Um, I can do this again. Yeah, we're using about 10 gigabytes. 
which is exact the same, the, the same amount of memory like on our NVIDIA GPU. So I choose this model size as purpose so it fits in my NVIDIA GPU because this only has 12 gigabytes. So with 16, it should be fine. So there is another reason I have to figure out what's the problem. I try to um, build it from source, but it didn't work. So I didn't try it only one time, I tried it two times. One time I uh, tried to build it, so just the Docker file, um, for for the CPU, because it seems like they have a different branch for the CPU and a different branch for the XPU. Um, and the Docker file was not working. Um, and then I checked out the other branch and I tried to do it for the GPU and it also didn't work. So the, uh, there are different reasons here. It seems like they are depending on some package, but this package is not really available and then the Docker file fails. So it seems like not only um, not not only is the Intel plugin for PyTorch not working, also both Docker files are not building. And um, yeah, there I have to say, yes, Intel, you, you can do it better. This, this is not production code. Then I thought, okay, seems like um, the PyTorch Intel extensions are not working. Maybe I can try it with DirectML. So with DirectML, um, we use the DirectX API to talk with the GPU. And I installed DirectML in a Conda environment. And um, then I try to yeah, import Torch, import DirectML. Um, this is our DirectML device, which should be our Intel GPU. Then we are cre creating two tensors which have both one dimension and one has the value one and the other one the value two. We are sending both tensors to our device. We are adding those tensors and now we want to get the value. The value should be three. We are getting a zero. And if I call it a second time, we get something like an error with our device. So this is also not working. Maybe I could try to not use the Docker file. Maybe I could try to build it from source. But um, it seems like my 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 first conclusion is deep learning with an Intel GPU is not production ready. After nothing worked with um, WSL, I thought maybe WSL is a problem. So I started my Ubuntu, also installed everything Docker. Um, I tried to get it running on Ubuntu, but I got the exact same segmentation error. Then I thought maybe the problem is my Python code. Um, so I wrote a very simple dummy training code uh, and this code is here. We are just importing Torch. We are um, again importing the inter extensions for PyTorch. We define a very simple model. Here we can configure the size. We have some dummy training data. Uh, here we are initializing the model. So th this is just a random data. We have our optimizer, uh, our um, loss is a mean squared error. Here um, is our main training function. And um, yeah, it's just a forwards path, a backwards path, we get a loss, we continue. 
and uh, we want to log this into a CSV file and also the time, the average time. Yeah, our device is the XPU again. We are sending our model to the device. We are um, using ipex.optimize again. We are sending our mean squared error to the device. Um, here we define the training underscore log.csv. We are opening it and now for every epoch we want to write one row. We are starting the time, we do one train step and then we are measuring the time again and um, writing this into a CSV and in the end we want to check how long did it take. And if I run that, now it's getting very interesting. So it's running. My GPU is getting louder, we see. Uh, the GPU did something. And it did a few steps. We get a loss. Everything is perfect. And then we get the very same error again with a segmentation fa fault. And I figured out if my network is much more little, then we don't get that. It's training. Okay, these are other errors. It's some error or some warning that we want to do something in FP. 64, which is not supported, which actually doesn't make sense because every tensor is in FP32. I set that here and also the random data is in a float 32. Yeah, but we are training. Everything is fine. Now if I increase the size of the network and also our transformer before was very big, like I make everything a little bit bigger. Now it's still working. Interesting. Uh, let's increase the number of samples. Interesting, still working. Now we got this error. Perfect. Let's look what's happening. I'm really curious uh, what's going on. We run this again. Here, our GPU memory is not full. Our GPU clock is high, that's okay. Uh, no, where's our memory? Um, yeah, that's the memory. Hmm. We got this error. Um, I do this again. I, th that's not even the maximum. We we have we have sixteen gigabytes. That that's only two thousand eight hundred megabytes. So somehow, if our model gets too big, or if we train too long, our API fails. Maybe our transformer model was so big that we got it at. Um, the first step already. Here, I don't know why it takes more time. I think everything is fine with my GPU. So I'm able to play games 
um, <laughs> three three hours without a break. Uh, my 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 Intel GPU works fine. Um, so there is some weird bug going going on. Maybe um, there is some memory leakage, and if the model is too big, or if you run too many steps. We leak more and more memory, and then we got a segmentation fault, and then it fails. Okay. But I'm happy that I got it running at all. Um, I'm happy that it, it, it would be a little bit unsatisfying that in one case it's learning perfect, and in the other case it's learning not at all, and I get that error. I'm happy that I have something between. I have some code where it runs a lot of steps and then this error is happening, which is great. So now I know um, it's not because my my previous nano GPT code, it's some strange bug. Now let's do the comparison to NVIDIA. My NVIDIA GPU is inside my computer again. Here we are using um, CUDA as a device. And it's about 0.03 seconds. So my NVIDIA GPU is more twice and fast, which makes sense. This is the first GPU from Intel. And this is the third generation of NVIDIA GPUs with Tensor Cores. So I think the Intel GPU is not a bad GPU, if it would work. Um, of course, Intel um, has not this advantage, but I think the results for the Intel GPU are pretty good. We also have to think about that PyTorch is multiple years old and has since a lot of years CUDA support and that NVIDIA um, has a lot of custom CUDA kernels. So they have since so many years support and this is really the first into GPU, discrete GPU generation and uh, the first time we have PyTorch support and NVIDIA is only twice as fast. Also, this Intel GPU has 16 gigabytes of memory. My my um, NVIDIA GPU only 12. So if we would have a model which was bigger than 12 gigabytes, then we are just not able to run it on um, on NVIDIA. And then we would have to buy some Intel GPU which has 16 gigabytes of memory. And this would be much more expensive than the card from Intel. Okay, let's talk about what worked and what didn't work. So uh, we were able to run inference and training on this Intel GPU, but it crashed. But um, we were able to detect it in WSL, to run code on it in WSL, to train this neural network to get a loss to do this with a few loops after that it crashed. Um, yeah, I think this is not a WSL issue because I got the same experience in Linux. So um, I think maybe it's some driver or some memory leak problem. Um, what didn't work? We were not able to do fully train run. We were not able to build the CPU Docker image and we were not able to build the GPU Docker image. And I think in this part, Intel has to improve. Um, I will PR my problems to the Intel repository. So I'm 100% sure that engineers from Intel will look over that and can fix it. Um, and yeah, that the GPU crashes, that's some problem, um, some serious problem, they have to look into it. I think the biggest improvement which Intel could do would be at their software side, not at the hardware side. So the, the drivers on Windows were great. I download the driver, I install it, I restart, immediately everything is working, every game is working. 
my GPU is detected, also my WSL detects my GPU, I, I see it as a device, everything is fine. So this, this part is great, um, but the Intel extensions part PyTorch experience is really not great. Um, on upstream, the Docker image should always be buildable, and I tried it for the XPU branch and for the CPU branch, and both didn't work. And this is a general pro problem. It should be always buildable because you can, you know that's always buildable because there is a test which runs every day which checks is it buildable or not. And this is, I have the feeling this project lacks a little bit of CI and tests. Um, also, the problems I got with my GPU, if there would be a test for Intel XPU with Ubuntu and Intel XPU with WSL and Intel CPU and everything, and you have external runners or internal runners, so they are external to GitHub but internal to, to Intel, and for every commit this test runs and then Intel know directly if there's a problem with the GPU or not. Um, so, so a lot of the issues and problems I had today, I would not have this if there would be a properly um, CI and test system. I'm 100% sure that Intel has this kind of tests internal, but for a great open source project, it would be good if it would be some external accessible CI system. I also think um, it's a big issue that the XPU and the CPU are parts are on different branches, and it seems like there is development on both branches. Um, and the XPU part is like 3000 commits before and behind, so they are developing in two directions and it, it seems like impossible to get this to one branch together again. And I think this is not good, um, a, a good software development practice for open source projects. Video, thank you so much for giving me this GPU Intel. And um, yeah, I'm really happy that Intel is um, advancing in the deep learning and GPU market. And I'm looking forward to get my hands on some Sapphire Rapids to do some deep learning with Intel CPUs.